Hello and welcome to Scale Stuff. In this week's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Academy 135th scale H or late version Panzer IV. But before we get into the model, it's time for a little bit of history. The Panzer IV can best be described as the workhorse of the German army during the Second World War. It was the second most produced German tank of World War II, only being surpassed by the Stug tank destroyer. It was originally intended as an infantry support tank, and when first issued, it came equipped with a short stubby gun designed to fire high explosives at things like machine gun emplacements. Over the course of the Second World War, the Panzer IV saw many upgrades to keep it in the running, extra side and turret armour was added, and a long main gun was fitted designed to give it more tank versus tank stopping power. The Panzer IV was a good all-round battle tank, it should not be forgotten, even if some of the more glamorous big tanks like Tigers have a greater piece of the public conscious today. Now onto the model. This kit was released in 2022 and dates back to a 2018 Academy retool of a Panzer IV, though what this was a retool of I couldn't find out despite all of my digging around on the internet. Um, sadly, unlike Academy's previous release of this kit, this version of the model does not come with the Zimmerit decals. I kind of got this kit by accident, but yeah, I wanted to build a Panzer IV, so I'm going to press on and build a Panzer IV rather than send it back. As always, I checked online to see what the rivet counters had to say about the model, and a few bits are mentioned about tiny details being missing, like a little vein in front of the driver's coupola and a few things about the detail on the tools not being the best. But to be honest, in my opinion, it's nothing major or kit breaking, and um, it's still an accurate model of a Panzer IV. On first looking at the sprues, everything looks rather nice. The sprues are crisp and well molded. They also have a feature that I really like, having nice hollow lettering marking each sprue type. I love this as it makes finding the right sprue easy at a glance rather than having to flick through the entire catalogue a million times during the build. The standard issue seam marks are present though on this model, along with quite a few ejection ports that will need to be cleaned up. Normally, while building, I keep a notepad on hand to record any bits I had trouble with during the construction, and to be honest, in a good way, this was one of the most boring kits trouble-wise to make. Overall, the builder is really easy, but there are still a few little bits to watch out for. Straight off the bat, in step one, make sure you get the lower panel the right way around. A dry fit will make this more obvious than the illustrations does. Another thing to watch out for here in the early hull building steps is hull drilling. I forgot to do this and had a little trouble later on, but that was a me being an idiot moment. I should have reread the instructions. As mentioned earlier, there are some ejection port marks on this kit that will need to be cleaned up as you go. First part I found that had a lot of ejection ports was the side panels of the hull. These are easy to clean up, but will be mostly hidden by the armour plates later on, so if you're lazy you might be able to skip doing this. Speaking of armour plates, the turret ones also have quite a lot of uh, ejection ports on the inner facing sides that will need to be cleaned up before they are added. The only thing I would suggest deviating from the instructions is not gluing the tension wheel axle in place until you can dry fit the rubber band tracks later on as the tracks are not very tight fitting and it would pay to make sure they fit right later on. The real tension wheel is also a little bit delicate and will benefit once being lined up and glued from a good amount of drying time before you actually put the tracks on otherwise it will sort of bend back in before the glue set off. As with all track vehicles, it pays to paint the tracks and wheel areas before moving on with the build. And on this model, it might also pay to paint the area behind the armoured panels on the turret before moving forwards, or simply leave them off until right at the end. I glued the turret plates on when I was building this model and found it a little bit tricky to get behind them and uh, do as good a job as I would like to on the uh, turret area. A nice touch with this model is that the big Schutzen or lower armoured skirts can be taken on and off and can be fitted via gravity while the model is painted, though they will need to be glued on later on to get the angles right once the model's done. Figures wise, sadly this kit didn't actually come with any figures, but the doors are all openable and with there's detail inside the hatches so they can be made in the open position if you like. Decals wise, this kit comes with markings for five different versions of tank three of which make tanks stationed in France, one makes a tank based in Russia, and one is for a tank based in Poland. 
Each one comes illustrated with a full colour paint guide. Though having a full colour guide is nice, there is just one not so little problem with this guide, as the diagram does not show a top down view of any of the tanks. And the left facing image is just a mirror image of the right facing image, which is really helpful. I did not like this personally, as I like to make a model as close to a real tank as I can when I can but I grudgingly made do by filling in the gaps with a healthy and totally historically accurate amount of imagination. Conclusion: The Academy Panzer IV is a nice model suited to a beginner, which, though easy to make, lets itself down in a few small and silly ways. The kit has good levels of detail that should be enough for most modelers, and it goes together very easily. I would say that the weakest parts of this model would be that it has a few ejection ports and seam lines that will need to be cleaned up as you go and that the rubber band tracks don't like acrylic paints and uh, yeah, if you use acrylic on them it will start flaking off. The colour plan annoyed me the most really, the not showing a top down view is a bit of a letdown as uh, otherwise it's fantastic to have a nice full colour instruction set. But aside from that, most of the problems I had with regarding to building this kit came from me not reading the instructions as thoroughly as I should have done. Overall, I still think this is a great model that builds into a nice representation of an iconic Second World War tank. I paid £30 for this model, second hand. Um, the box stunk of cigarettes as a side note, there's no smell of vision, but these one, this really stunk, he must have been smoking cigars in the thing. But uh, for the £36 that this model typically retails for, the kit is well worth it for the money. Anyway, that's my review of the 135th scale Academy Panzer IV late version. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video and find it helpful if you're planning on building one of these at home. Until next time though, look after yourself and have a good one. Goodbye.